let's take a look at this problem and try to verify that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Okay, which one looks more complicated? I would say the left-hand side. So let's work with the left-hand side. Let's write this cosine x over 1. Of course, in order to add those two, we have to uh, multiply by the least common denominator. In this case, that would be 1 minus tangent of x, 1 minus tangent of x. Let's see what happens. And sometimes the left-hand side may not work out for you. If this is the case, erase it and maybe start with the right-hand side if that seems easier. So it's really up to you. There is no one size fits all. It depends what you think is easier and if it doesn't work, use the other side. Let's see, so we definitely have a 1 minus tangent of x in the denominator and in the numerator, if we distribute, we have the cosine of x minus the cosine of x times the tangent of x. Now, don't forget the minus cosine of x from the second fraction, and this is what we have. So we can go ahead and the cosine of x, they definitely cancel out. Now, I would say the tangent of x can be written as the sine of x. Let me just do this here on this. Let me actually, let me erase that. Oh, let me get my rag. Instead of tangent of x, I'm going to say sine of x over cosine of x, and this cosine is over 1. You can see that the cosine reduce as well. So what we're really left with in the uh, numerator is the minus sine of x over 1 minus tangent of x. Hmm. That does not look like anything that we need to get on the right-hand side. Remember, my second advice would be if we have a tangent and a cotangent to change it into uh, sine and cosine. So let's see what happens here. I'm going to continue on because I have no room. Minus sine of x over 1 minus tangent can be rewritten as the sine of x divided by the cosine of x. Okay. Uh, what we need to do now is we need to continue working just here on this denominator part and see what, what we can come up with. So instead of 1, of course, we have to have the same uh, denominator again, so I'm going to write cosine of x over cosine of x minus sine of x over cosine of x, and that, of course, is all over negative sine of x. Okay, I think we're getting somewhere. Keep your right-hand side in mind, because that's what we need to get to, and somehow I can see this happening, hopefully. We'll take a look. Uh, okay, so in the denominator, we have cosine x minus sine of x all over cosine of x, and the numerator is the minus, I'm just looking to make sure there really was a minus, minus the sine of x. Okay, so again, this is a complex fraction. How do we simplify complex fraction? By multiplying by the reciprocal of the denominator. Minus sine of x, let's write that over 1, times cosine of x over cosine x minus sine x. Oh, we're almost there. Now, if you multiply you get a negative sine of x, cosine of x, all over cosine of x minus sine of x. 
Now, that's not quite what my right hand side is. My right hand side is positive. So what we're doing actually, we're multiplying both sides by a negative one, numerator and denominator, which I'm allowed to do because I'm really not changing any, any values because that's positive one here. So if I now multiply by negative one, the numerator, I have a positive sine x cosine x and if I distribute this negative one that gives me a positive sine of x and over the cosine minus cosine of x. Oh look at that which is definitely equal to the left hand side. Yeah we did some good work here here we go. We just proved that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. That was a long one. Okay. Let's now 